living God. The God of heaven, the God of creating God, the God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that took time to look and make us because we have been fearfully and wonderfully made. You have given us promises that even the angels desire to look upon and understand. You have blessed us. And we recognize that without you, we can be nothing and do nothing because it's in you that we live, move, and have our being. Now we release now our hearts, our minds, our spirits to your control. We submit to the authority of your word that you have established in the heavens. The grass wither and the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. We ask that you seal it in our hearts, seal it in our minds, impress it upon our souls that we might be your servants to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to talk a little bit this morning about what I see kind of in the situation that, that we're facing as a world. Sometimes I just wonder. Every time I think I've heard or seen the most absurd thing, something else absurd tops it. And I, thought, I think back sometime to say, is this the worst that it's ever been? And I can go back through history and think, no, there's been other times that have been pretty on earth that have been pretty jacked up. We're not the only generation that's facing this or facing that. It's been some, some pretty, you know, uh, you know I, I think back to the Bible's account of the days before the flood. It was a lot like what we experience now. They, I say folks was just living life, getting married and giving in marriage and partying and living while all hell was breaking loose all around them. It wasn't that it was like, you know, sometimes when we think of hell, we think of a lot of conflict, war, because it's not a lot of that going on overtly right now. But in the spirit and in the natural, it's a lot going on. It's, you know, when I look at, you know, I look at some of the, of our larger cities, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking at a city on my hometown that, you know, murder after murder. You know, the Monday morning news says we had 20 killings over the weekend and 72 shootings in one city. And you multiply that just over and over. We got terrorism. We got wars. We got, I mean, it's a lot of stuff going on. And in the midst of all that, People have lost their identity. They have no idea who they are. Men say they're women. That's the way they feel or identify themselves. Women say they're men because that's how they identify themselves. Now we got controversy. Um, let them go. Just, just don't put no sign on. Just put bathroom and wherever you, you know, whatever you feel today, just go on in there. You know, just, you know, you want to shower with the girls today, just shower with the girls today. You want to shower with the boys tomorrow, just go on shower with the boys. Everything for everybody, every way, every which kind of way. What in the hoover is going on? Y'all wonder what Hoover means. It's the biggest dam I know. Hoover. <laughs> What's going on? So in the midst of all this, I, 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 sometimes I say, Lord, what it, show me something to encourage me. And he took me back to the book of 2 Kings. And if you go back into the book of 2 Kings in chapter 6, the world that was Israel at the time was tore up from the floor up. They were under siege. And because they were under siege by Syria, the city of Jerusalem or Samaria was besieged and 
things had gotten very, very difficult. They say that um, they were selling goats' heads for large sums of money. They were selling dove dung for money. For those that don't know what dung means, it's poo-poo. They were selling Bird poo-poo. <laughs> Times are hard when you start buying poo-poo. Right. Well, some of you buy it, not you, but it's being purchased every day. <clears throat> some of the stuff that we spend money on is nothing more than, uh, it might be called crack or crystal or ecstasy, or even marijuana, but it ain't nothing but poo-poo. And we're spending money on it because it helps us to escape temporarily the things that life is forced upon us. It was during that time that times had gotten so bad that there were two women that had come together and decided on how to split up the children. Let's cook yours and eat it today and then we'll cook mine and eat it tomorrow. It's, things are bad when you begin to devour the children. But it's happening today. I'm not saying overt cannibalism, but we are devouring our children. We're still in their childhoods. We're, we're, they're growing up too fast. They're exposed to too much. They're confused. So let's confuse them even more. One child of a school of 700 might have some psychological issue where they cannot identify who they are. So let's change the whole school. Let's make all 700 children confused to help the one. And I understand that, that that one, but that one might need a little psychological help that they're not capable of providing. So let's change the whole atmosphere. And if you look back, it's been about 30, 40 years when, when the main thing they did to affect our children was when they pulled prayer out the school. They took prayer out the school. They took the Ten Commandments out the school. They took God out the schools and have pushed God over into a corner. Like, it's okay if y'all want to go over there and worship your little God, but long as you don't say nothing because it's getting to the point that if they, if they find out that I say something negative about homosexuality, gayism, Bisexualism, which ain't nothing but freakiness. You can't decide what you want to do something with. And then the, the most confusing is the transsexual. Somebody has no idea who they are. And you cannot convince me that God does not know how to create a human being and give him an identity. So we are in the midst of a crazy toe-up situation. Very similar, in, especially in the spirit. Like I say, we're not suffering from famine. There's not a great deal of, of where everybody's starving, but we are starving spiritually. This country is, is country and, and worldwide, we're, we're starving spiritually because Ministry after ministry, denomination after denomination is compromising the word of God to be popular. Well, if everybody else is doing it, we might as well do it too. The Bible must have really meant something else because 
we feel a certain way. The man says, I love that man. So because I love him, because we have somehow turned lust, the lust of the flesh, into love. And lust of the flesh is just fornication. Whether you're fornicating with a man, fornicating with a woman, or man fornicating with a man, or woman fornicating with a woman, it's all the same. It's just lust. It's the lust of the flesh. And it's sinful in God's eyes because God has given us a better way. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof, is destruction. So just because it appears right unto a man, because it's difficult for us to uh, respond to and adjust, that, that they're so convinced that this is how they feel and how they perceive themselves, we can't come up with a solution or an antidote, so we go along with it. When the Bible clearly says that it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. We have got to get to where we are dependent upon the spirit. I commend the folk that were marching in front of the Target store. You know, um, Target, you know, they, they, they want to have transgender bathrooms. Um, but there's a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof is destruction. Oh, go ahead and march. That's, that's fine. That's a way to let, you, let people know. But I think if we spent a little more time praying and a little more time just knowing that the Bible is forever settled in heaven and that the wages of sin is death, it will blow up in their own faces. Oh, it's coming. And I don't want to put this on. I don't want, I'm not speaking to, to I'm not prophesying something. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm almost like a future news reporter. I'm not prophesying. I'm just telling you that based on the way life is progressing, we're going to see Serious ramifications of this unidentified bathroom situation. It's already been one one eight year old girl choked by a man. What are you even doing in the in the bathroom? Well, what's going to prevent it? Because we're doing the the world is doing the well. Let's put it like this: the world is just being the world. The world is doing what the world do. And we have got to become where we are in the world, but not of the world. The day is coming, believer, where you're going to stand out more and more. The day is coming when the true believer will no longer be able to blend into the shadows of life. Because the question is going to come. What do you think about this? And your answer is going to have to be, well, according to Scripture, it's an abomination. Oh, you're just full of hate speech. The day is coming when the believer is going to have to stand fast. And because you stand fast, that's when we become the salt of the earth. That's when we become the irritant. That's when we become the light of the world. It's going to be uncomfortable to be a true believer. But in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, shall be able to separate me from the love 
of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Getting back to where I was at, 2 Kings chapter 6. Times had gotten very difficult. And I, I'm relating that because even though when you look at that story, it, 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 it is profound in, in a lot of the suffering that the people suffered. But in the spirit right now, we're suffering the same kind of thing. It's bad right now. People are suffering. People are, you know, suffering with addiction. They, there's, there's people ODing all over. And it's not just the community. I, I remember I watched a movie one time, The Godfather, award-winning movie. Most of y'all probably seen it. And they had a meeting of all these big mafia back in the 40s, big mafia leaders, and they, they were arguing at that time about the distribution of narcotics. And one of the guys reared back in his seat and said, well, this is what we do. We control it as a business, and we keep it in the dark. Colored people, they're animals. They kill each other anyway. I'm paraphrasing. If anybody's seen the movie, they probably remember the part they had big and Keep it in the dark, peoples. But like Malcolm said one day, when his timing, his statement was true, but his timing wasn't the best. It was after the assassination of President Kennedy, and they asked him, Malcolm, what did you think about that? And he said, looks like the chickens have come home to roost. It means that your behavior, your decisions, your plots and schemes will eventually, the way Haman did in the days of, of Queen Esther, will backfire on you and you'll be hung from the very gallows that you have constructed to hang the children of God. In much the same way, the people that are suffering the most right now from addiction of opiate substances are no longer the dark people. Mm -hmm. It's an issue now because it's sin. See, you can't control it. It cannot be satisfied. It will continue to devour and eat up until the Holy Spirit, it says, when the comes in like a flood, it only the Holy Spirit can raise up a standard against it. It, it, has, a, it has a life of its own. It will continue to devour until the Spirit comes against it. I'm just bringing up, I'm just trying to give you some parallels between what we're experiencing now and what was being experienced in Israel in this book of 2 Kings. And what took place in the beginning of chapter 7 is what is about to take place this morning in your ears. That Something was in the mind of God that he put in the prophet to say, go tell the people, my people, no longer be concerned about the situation that you experience because you are in the world, but you're not of the world. If you stand for holiness and righteousness, if you will not be moved, if you would be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, then I don't care what is happening around you, you going to be all right. 
There's too many scriptures in here to bring encouragement because I heard a word that said all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purposes. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if everybody, the Bible clearly says a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Oh, if we get together in unity, if we get together with an understanding that wherever two of us would agree upon touching anything, that it shall be done for them by my Father which is in heaven, and that one shall put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand to flight. In the midst of all of this stuff that was going on, all this craziness, all this foolishness, and believe me, the piper will have to be paid at some point. The world can't continue to live crazy and do whatever they want to do and not expect that something is going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen all right. It ain't going to be all right for everybody. That's why we have to be ready because the day is coming where they're going to look for the cleft in the rock. Uh, that's what they were talking about in Revelation. There's a church that's still going to be standing for holiness and righteousness that's going to look like an island of safety in a lost and dying world. And we got to be ready to receive them. To minister to them. Can't get caught up in the foolishness. The, in um, 2 Kings chapter 7, 1, the Bible says, Then the prophet Elisha said to the people, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. In the area that you are occupying, the situation is going to turn around. Now, the world is still going to suffer, but there's going to be a safe haven, a sanctuary for them to run into if we don't get caught up in the mess. Holiness and righteousness will always be the standard. If I had a, mess, a, a, a title for today's message, it would simply be this, because we're going to deal with the next verse. But the title would be, Don't Let Doubt Leave You Out. <laughs> Don't let doubt leave you out of your blessings. Don't let doubt leave you out of your, your, your uh, okay, let's read what it says. Then a Lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, this is what the man of God replied, Thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. The Lord had a little doubt in his mind. You got to get, see, that's why I've been, for the last couple months, I've been, I've been talking to you. Get your tithing right. Why? Because there are windows in heaven. If you're not tithing, you don't believe there are windows in heaven. That would be the only reason you would withhold it. Because if you believed it, like this Lord says, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be when the Lord clearly said, I will open you the windows of heaven. So there must be windows 
in heaven. And I will pour out. But if you stand in doubt of my word, you will not. You will see it, but you won't participate. Don't let doubt leave you out. There were four lepers who were experienced outcasts. Lepers, those that weren't even allowed in the camp, like the Christians of today. Uh, you, 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 you too judgmental. Uh, you know, you, you don't, you talk about your God love, but how come he don't love me because I'm the way I am? Well, you the way you are because sin is in you. And Christ died to cover it, to redeem you from it, but you don't want to let it go. So because I let you know that the Bible or my God says that your lifestyle is abomination, I'm now an outcast. I'm a leper to you. See, true Christians are going to become lepers to the world. They're going to see us and, and um, hold us responsible and use their lifestyles and the way they want to continue it. I mean, the day is coming when understand who you are. You're going to be the voice crying in the wilderness. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But the whole world does not want to repent. They like what they're doing. And it's not until a goat's head or their buying, purchasing, doo-doo to survive that they're going to look and say, help me. That's why you have to stay abstain from all appearance of evil. That is why, believer, leper to the world, leper to the world, not leper in the illness, leper to the world, the Bible says, come out from among them. Doesn't mean move to some island somewhere, move way out in the country somewhere and build a fence around and some silliness like that. It says, come out from among them in your mindset. Come out from among them in your lifestyle. Come out from among them in your faith. Come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. And God says, I will receive you. And you will be my people, and I will be your God. Are you bold enough to trust God's word? Are you bold enough to step out from the crowd, to shine like a light in a day of darkness? Are you ready to be salt and irritate somebody when you walk in the room? Oh, here he come. Here she come. Put the beer up. Put the drinks up. Hide the weed. Hide, oh, put your clothes back on, girl. Cover up your cleavage. Here they come. Let your him down. Why are you half naked in here anyway? Are you willing to take? It's a price to be paid to live holy. Everybody ain't going to like the holy one. Here come the holier than thou. Yes, I am. And I bring a word to you. If you don't repent, you're going to hell. But the four lepers, the four outcasts, that was sitting outside the gate, looked at each other and said, you know what? The situation over there is tore up. They living crazy. They won't obey God. And uh, now they are paying the price for their sin. But because we're in this place, we appear to be suffering the same fate. But God, I heard the man of God say 
that about this same time tomorrow, if I would just hold on to my holiness, if I would just hold on to my faith, if I would just hold on to righteousness, if I would take a stand in a dark and lost world, that there's going to be a breakthrough for me. So why sit here till we die? Why don't we just go on down to the enemy's camp and see what might be in there for us? The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. It's time for us to step out of the safe place and to walk right into the enemy's camp and take back what belongs to the believer in this life. If we say, verse 4, we'll go in the city, the famine's in the city, and we'll die there. If we sit here and do nothing, there ain't going to be much going on here either. But let us now go into the enemy's camp. I <laughs> Are you bold enough? The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. It's time for the church to stand up and be who she is. You are bride dressed with a wedding gown and combat boots. You are armed and dangerous. It's time for you to be who you were created to be. This world can't handle you. We are the rock that the builders rejected. We're the mountain that crushed every other kingdom and brought in the day of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Say, come, let's go to the enemy's camp. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, well, <laughs> situation ain't changed. They rose up in the twilight. See, sometimes you got to go out in the twilight time. It says, and to go to the camp of the enemy, the Syrians, and when they will come to the uttermost part of the camp, behold, there was no man there. There was no enemy. Oh, when the Lord opened the door for you. Look, when you just, sometimes it's just a matter of you just doing something by faith. You see all the obstacles in front of you. You see all the things to fear and be concerned about. But God has already, if you would just step out in faith and get to the other side of your, your doubt, you will find the blessing is waiting for you there. For the Lord, this is what I have. The Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise. Didn't nothing happen. They heard something. See, the day is coming when the world, the enemy's going to hear something. See, that's why, you know, I'm. I, Sometime the day is coming when when we shout the shout of victory, when we get together on one accord and give God praise, real true praise that will never cease to be in your mouth, the world going to hear it and know that there is a God. Say the noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said to one another, Lo, the king of Israel, the king of kings, and Lord of Lord has hired against us the kings of the Hittites. They start hearing kings. See, when you understand the king you serve is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and when you step in the room, the king of kings and Lord of lords step in with you. When you step in a situation and you got the king of kings and Lord of lords with you, then he's in the situation. When you go into the school, the king of kings and Lord of lords steps into the school. When you go on your job, you got the king of kings and lord of lords with you on your job. When you step into the bank to talk about, you got the king of kings and lord of lords with you. I'm telling you, if you would just trust him. When the lepers came, 
they went into one tent and ate and drank. And they carried from thence silver, gold, ha, raiment, ha, and went and hid it and came again and went to another tent and carried gold, ha, silver, and raiment from that tent. And they said to each other, see, the day coming, church, when it's going to be so good for the believer. I know you're hearing a lot of doom and gloom, but the day is coming for the righteous. The day is coming for the light to shine. Rise and shine for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is on you. And when that happens, you got to be aware that said to each other, we do not well to keep this to ourselves. We shall not hold our peace, but we're going to shout from the mountaintops, there is a God and his name name is Jesus, and if you'll accept him as your Lord and Savior, you can succeed. There's good news for the people, the lost and dying world. Can't hold our peace. And if we wait, something might happen. So let's go now and tell the world. Jesus is real. God is real. The situation is what the situation is. But for the believer, but for the Christian, but for the saved folk, whatever you want to call yourself, the church, the true and living church, the ecclesia, the ecclesia, however you want to say it, but for us, ha, there is something better for us. All things work together for good to them that love God and have been called according to his purposes. There's doors about to open up. But when you get there, you cannot keep it to yourself. This same time tomorrow, it's very short time. Suddenly, thank you, there's blessings going to fall upon you because you've been faithful, steadfast, and unmovable, always abounding. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.